do ABE and we know that a lot of you are stuck at home so we wanted to get out today and talk to you a little bit about what wetlands are and kind of take you on a virtual field trip to talk about what elements a wetland has and then talk a little bit also about wetland soils and how it's different than from soil in other parts of different ecosystems. So wetlands have three main components. Today we're at the celery bog wetland and one of the components of wetlands is hydrology or the water that's present in the wetlands. Wetlands are wetter than most environments, but they're not as wet as things like lakes where we see water all the time. So to define a wetland during the growing season or when plants are mainly alive, we have different rules. So for a certain number of days of the growing season, and it varies by region, water needs to be either at the soil surface or just above it like you can see here or slightly below the soil surface. So when you look at the soil, you may not see the water, but the soil would still appear somewhat moist or a little bit more wet. And then other than the hydrology, another main component of wetlands are wetland plants. Most of the plants in the community for at least part of the year need to be hydrophytic plants or wetland plants that are plants that can survive in water conditions. There are different wetlands. Some have trees like you can see here, and then some wetlands have grasses. So the grasses are dormant right now, but there are lots of different types of species that we see in wetlands. This is a invasive species that we see in a lot of wetlands in the Midwest called reed canary grass. And then over here, we have some wetland plants that are starting to come back alive and coming out of dormancy. So there's a wide variety of plants that you can have in wetlands, but having wetland plants in an area is one of those specifications. And then the last main component of having a wetland is having wetland soils. So wetland soils can be different. In this wetland in particular, we have very organic soils. So in wetlands, they're wet for a large amount of the time. <laughs> and with this, these wet conditions, microorganisms and other soil organisms cannot break down the organic matter. So you have things like leaves and dead grasses that ended up in the soil, and soil microorganisms break that down over time. Under wet conditions, these soil microorganisms can't work as quickly. So you end up having a lot of organic matter in wetlands. So this is some wetland soil that I picked up in this wetland. You can see it's really dark. That dark color is representative of the organic matter. We see in darker soils, there's more organic matter. And you can also see there's a lot of undecomposed plant material in here. You can see a lot of roots and sort of larger materials. And this is part of wetland hydrology that we expect. Organic matter just isn't being broken down as quickly as something like a forest soil. So here we have a forest soil. You can see those big pieces of organic matter really aren't present. It's still pretty dark, but we lose those a lot of those roots and a lot of that material, and it looks a lot more like soil we may find in our garden or in our front yard. And one of the things we want to show you today too is how we would sample soils from a wetland. So wetlands are like the kidneys of our ecosystem. They clean pollutants for us that are in our water and transform them into things that are less harmful for us to drink, as well as for aquatic life and rivers and streams. So this is a soil probe we have here, and we use it a lot of the time to sample soils and wetlands. Soils and wetlands are a bit more challenging to sample because they are so wet. So go ahead and come over and show you. Most of the time, we're only concerned with the top bit of soil so we push this probe into the soil, kind of twist it to keep the soil in here, and then pull it back out. And you can see again, just this rich upper layer with a lot of organic matter in it, all those roots that are not decomposed. And the soil color itself tells us a lot about the wetland. And a lot of times when we're defining wetland soils, we use color as a really important marker to show that. So these are really dark. So one of our tools as soil scientists is we have the Munchell color book. Do you want to hold this for me, Violet? Yeah, come over and hold it. There you go. So we have all these different colors that we use to define soils. And so in wetlands, we try and look for colors that have both a high value, so this number along here, and a low chroma, so this number along here, so kind of these darker colors. So when we're trying to characterize our soil, we don't just want to assign a color based on our own opinion. We use these color chips. So how we do this is we put, try and keep the sun at our back, and we look at the color and try and see, is this the color of our soil? And we flip through the pages, 
and look through all the different colors to try and figure out what our soil is. Thank you. And then in other wetlands, we don't have these dark organic soils. We have what we call redoxomorphic features. So we don't have any in this wetland that I was able to find for today, but I'll show you some pictures. So under these hydrologic conditions, there's not a lot of oxygen left in soils. And when this happens, some soil microorganisms will use iron as an electron acceptor. Just like we breathe in oxygen, some soil microorganisms can use iron. And when this happens, they end up consuming the iron and you get these dark gray spots that we call depletions. And so this is characteristic of a wetland soil when you have this gray, which represents where iron has been lost. And then you sometimes have these red areas. And this is areas that have been oxygenated, whether from roots of plants or just from general mixing of the water column. And you have the iron is again oxidized and it turns this red color. So in a lot of wetland soils, we may not have the dark organic matter I showed you, but we may have some of these other features that you can see here, especially in regions where there's a lot of iron in the water. So now if there's anyone who has questions, we'd love to answer them. You can comment them on them below and we'll come back on to our broadcast and answer some of the questions we get. Or if we have some now, we can go ahead and answer them. I don't see any now. Okay. Say bye. Well done.